This is the third dialogue between J. Krishnamurti and Alan Norday in Malibu, California, 1972. You know, sir, I would like to ask a question concerning you know, the actual state of affairs in the world, mm-hmm. which is, take the various geographical and national divisions of the world, both religiously, politically and socially, and you see everywhere man is really basically concerned with food, clothes and shelter. And pleasure. And, which, and pleasure. That he wants only that, actually, mm? yes. because he can see that, grasp it, taste it, hold it. Security and pleasure. Ple- and the religious people supply it in a different way. Yes. The politician does. The technician does. Yes. Mm? The the religious organizations in their own peculiar, limited way supply that. Oh, definitely, because one even sees that when an Eastern religion comes to the West, they are very much, they're very concerned to make it acceptable to the West. So a Hindu temple looks like a church with red plush pews in it, and an altar which is very much like an altar in a Catholic church. And uh, one sees that um, the taste and preference is very much catered for, even by religion. Therefore, they really, they do please. So, the vast majority of people are concerned with only one thing. They know what they want and they get it, more or less. Food, clothes and shelter. And... What is the function of a man who says, look, That isn't the only thing in life. Mm. In all this disorder, the question arises, sir, what is the ultimate order, which is an order beyond, beyond this exterior disorder? What is the order psychologically? How will a man live in order? How will a religious man function, first of all, in his own life, and with regard to all the people around him who are in such complete sorrow and in such vulgarity, as you said yesterday. Yesterday you said that this was the stream of vulgarity, and I think it's a very good expression. This stream of vulgarity, we see that it is made up of geographical differences, cultural differences, um, national, religious, uh, yes, political, religious differences, and within all this mess people are struggling along, and one says there must be another dimension to life, this has been called I the wonder, religious dimension. Sir, I wonder if they do, or they, are, they would like to have a different dimension, provided the first dimension is assured. assured. Give me bread first. And pleasure. And yes, and then we'll talk about the rest. It's only very few, very, very few say, look, bread is all right, we must have it, but that's not important. Something else is more important. More important. Yes. Now, what is more important, and then how will such men work in this world with people who think that bread and pleasure are more important? What is the issue of a serious man, sir? That's it. What is the real issue in this complicated critical situation the world is in, what is the real issue for a serious man in his own life and in the lives of others? That serious man, to I speak wonder, quickly, sir, we call him the religious man. I wonder man. what you would call a serious man. What is a serious man? A serious man would be someone who looks at all this disorder, who sees that man is born, suffers and dies, 
when he sees the apparent senselessness of all this, he sees how fleeting and shallow it is, and he says, good gracious, is there no other dimension to existence? Is this what I came into the world for, to reproduce and die? It's all so silly. The serious man says, is there another dimension? Because he has intimations of beauty, which sometimes are very faint and vague, nevertheless, out of the experience one gathers in life, one comes, one must come to ask a question, is there another dimension, is there something which will give un unity to life and purpose and beauty, something beyond this shallow transitory mess? I wonder if you would ask that question really, if you were caught in the transitory life, mm. in the misery of it, in the confusion of it, your first question would be, how am I to get out of this? Not into a new state, but how am I to step out of this misery, this terrible chaos? Mm? This shallowness. And, and shallowness and all the rest of it. And is it possible? You follow that? If I was a if I was that kind of person, that's if I were out in the street. Yes, in the, right. yes. <laughs> if I was in the stream, that's yes. the only question I would ask. Yes. Not yes. whether gods exist, don't exist. Whether I think it's the same question. Yes, when one says, "Is there another dimension?" One is saying, in fact, how can how can one have something other than this dimension? Yeah. You see, I want to get at this in a different way, which is. I want, if I was in the stream, if I'm fairly intelligent and acknowledge the absurdities of this vulgar, vulgar stream and all the rest of it, yes. I would say to myself, is there in me, not out there in some faraway place, is there in me a place where there is absolute where there is no corruption, peace. Uh, where there is real, absolute order. peace, order, 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 peace, beauty, yeah. oh, sensitivity, they, intelligence. I, I would like to get at that. Yes. In spite of all the misery, I know how to deal with it. If once I can get at that, yes. or um, I can balance it and so on. My concern would be: Is there? in this chaos, which is me, a deep Tao, yes. a place where the mind is completely quiet, full of something, beauty and all the rest of it. Yes. I think I would ask that question. Yes, sir. Because I have played with beliefs and with gurus, with saviours and masters and I think the first thing is to see that all these, all these structures of thought which offer some kind of salvation are part of the stream. It's part of the stream. The division of being a Sufi, <laughs> a Catholic, a Muslim, a Jew, a Buddhist, an and Indian, all the, and so on. I'm fairly intelligent. I observe This division all. repeats itself also in the so-called spiritual quest. My guru is holier uh, than thy guru. <laughs> I've seen all that, and I and I said that's too absurd. Mm. Mm. The amazing thing is, very few people see this. Very few people see this. They turn from the apparent materialism of the world to what they think is spirituality, and they are caught up in the same competitive divisiveness in the in in religion. I know a sect, a guru, a discipline, a savior, a creed, and so on. Yes, so. So. We must How? take this into consideration when we speak about the ultimate order in all this. Yes, sir. Because that's most of these simple. people will say, well, that's exactly what we're saying. The, the solution of all this is very simple. Join our church. Uh, that's, or join uh, our ashram. Uh, no, no, throw all that out. Throw all Tibetan that out. Buddhism has the answer. Uh, throw it Billy all. Graham, every Sunday on television, will tell you, we've got the answer, Mr. Nixon and I. 
I uh, so look. So where is the? I th I throw out all that. Hmm. Not because I'm stupid or I want to belong to my special uh, sect or my sp I want to invent a new sect. I throw out all that. Always out yes, mine and the other man. Uh, everybody's. Of course. Including the Catholic <laughs> Jesus, the myth. Yes, one must the throw hymn. out all the the things which were cultural. Absolutely, I throw it out. Even yes, it's it's very interesting. The the Jewish religion, a great deal of it is simply the legal code. Of course, I know and all it's, this. It's a so don't let's go. Mm -hmm. I, being fairly intelligent, observant, studied a good little bit suffered, and I see all these religions are more or less the same. They are divi divisive, mm -hmm. they are uh, antagonistic to each other. And I said, look, I don't want to join a new sect or the, leaving the old sect. I throw the whole thing out. That's right. I throw it out. It's yes. not an idea. Yes. Now, this is the message which many people get from your talks. And then they are what the French would call égaré. Égaré. They look around and they say, everything goes and nothing goes. You find them dropping out of school. You find them, when you say, for instance, what you're saying now is, all the moralities of society are immoral. Absolutely. They throw out the moralities of society and then they are buffeted about in the pursuit of their own fancies, ambitions of and course, pleasures. Of course, of course. So. So, uh, so what one I'm must very well understand what you're saying. Sir. I say, yes, sir. So I'm saying this, sir. I throw all this out. I throw out all the directives, disciplines, beliefs, disciplines, concepts, uh, guru, everything. All out. the processes in time which are offered to people to get out of the mess of Absolutely. material. Absolutely. I way. throw them out. So what have I left? Now, many people have got this far, but, sir, and for, they are in a mess. Right. And they run so, around like, and they're like, chicken like without, demons. Yeah. They don't know what to do. Now, wait a minute. I have thrown them all out. And I actually have thrown them out. Not as an idea, but inwardly or outwardly. I don't that belong. that they don't exist for one. I, I don't no, belong. They belong to any or to right. Then, I my next question is: Is there something in me, not invented, not hmm. supposed, not a self-created myth? Yes. Is there in me, a, or is there? Yes. Is there? Is there? A. A piece. A silence, a beauty that is not corruptible, that doesn't belong to the vulgar stream, that is not an illusion, that is not simply capitulation and quiet as quiet, quiet, quiet. Uh, the, so those are all again yes. tricks of the mind. Exactly. Of yes, because many people. Will say, oh, I've found it. I have oh, no, Jesus. No, no, no. <laughs> A lady got me, said this to me the other day. No, 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 I've heard this all. So. so, is there something real in all this mess? Oh. Not in the mess. Is there something real? When I have discarded the whole human culture and their inventions, their formulas, their gurus, their ideas of virtue, everything out of myself. Is there anything like real, unadulterated peace? Mm. Which is not, as you said, quietism. Which is not a thing which m mind 
gets caught in. Which is not a fancy, which is not uh, created by thought or imagination or belief. Right. I asked that question. Mm -hmm. I asked the question whether there is, and I have thrown out the whole invention of man, mm -hmm. including his gods, mm -hmm. is there a state of mind that's really timeless. Mm -hmm. A state that is really, which is always renewing itself, not in time, no. in which is not a influence, process. Which is not a result. Result. Which is always living, moving, changing. Which is a source? Is there a source? That's right. Is there a perennial source of purity? So that's of, what I would like to find out. Of goodness. Of yeah, I would, that's what yes, sir. I, as human being, live that is here. The, that is the question, the religious yeah. question, if we speak quickly. Yeah. That's what religious. I want to find out. Yes. If I was a serious man, mm rejected the whole thing. Yes, is there peace and also freedom? And that peace and means freedom, yes. all that. And is it real? Now how do I find out? You see, so what happens, a strange thing happens when you ask that question. Because you are thrown out everything, your mind instantly has a different quality. Yes. The other day I saw in the cinema a vulgar woman sitting in the yogi posture with her hands stretched out legs crossed in the lotus posture and all that, and absolutely still, yes. Hmm? Yes. gazing into outward space. Yes. And uh, Self-hypnotised. Absolutely. Yes. Conceited and, and it's dull. So <laughs> that there, there is an inquiry, even in the most vulgar, yes. this demand for this. Yes, and there is also in the most vulgar an imitation or a, a mental reconstruction of the real. People speak about peace and so they uh, think peace. And People the, speak about emptiness and so they imagine <laughs> and project space. All these signs the boys have yes. peace and... Yes. Yes. Uh, they have greet it. each other sometimes <laughs> with the word peace. And I know, I know. So it really feels now, so How am sometimes. I, who have discarded the world, the world being the vulgar stream. Which is aggression and which that is anger and so on. That. When I've discarded it, what hasn't the mind itself lost its quality of of seeking, hmm, of wanting to find out of, of direction, of a purpose. Of demanding. Of the, the whole, you see, that's, yes. that's very difficult. Yes, because the mind has always been busy demanding fragmentary things. Yes. Small things, more money, more sex and, and, and so on. And now the mind, if it has really understood this vulgar stream, it must see that even when it demands the totality, oh, no, no, it's the same thing. That, it's there the is same no fragmentary, demand. It's the same fragmentary movement. There is no demand. Therefore, there's no demand either about the particular That's or the so whole. So we are beginning to see a mind that discards the vulgar stream completely uh, is no longer seeking. Because it is the seeking which makes the vulgar. There, we say that there is no longer; it's no longer seeking. Therefore, there is no 
movement outer or inner right and there is no longer the demand to achieve to become or not to become When the mind discards totally this vulgar stream, because it is not moving in any direction, it becomes extraordinarily stable. I don't know. Oh, yes. Extraordinarily non dependent. No, no, like a mountain settled. Not influenced. It has, it is, it is established. It is itself. Uh, no, I must be careful. You don't use those words because the mind that has discarded the vulgar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm can never be itself. There is nothing to be mm. itself. Mm. In the stream you can say, I am... No, I, but it's not trying to be anything. No. It's not trying to achieve. No. If there is no movement of indirection, mm. seeking, mm. demanding, mm. 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 The mind is not moving outwardly or inwardly. Mm -hmm. There is a certain quality of stability. Yes. And nothing can penetrate it. No influence, no pressure, no um, reward, punishment. Nothing can penetrate. I don't know if you see. Yes, sir. Yes, because it doesn't react. It not re no. There is nothing to react or not. It mm. is. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. It this is, is clear. established in depth. That's right, sir. Yes, it's clear, sir. Mm. And because it has no movement going out or coming in, seeking or not seeking, wanting or not being or not being, demanding, it has an extraordinary sense of stillness, doesn't it? Hmm? Yes. Which is not the stillness of a river which has battled through great mountains, valleys, mm. uh, cities, and now suddenly finds itself quiet in a pool, mm. Mm. or in an ocean, or whatever it is. Mm. It's not the stillness of after effort. Uh, and it, the stillness is not a personal experience. I think that's where our difficulty is going to come in. Mm. The other day, in Italy, when I was talking to somebody, Whole group, he said, I don't want your personal experience. He said, mm. I said, mm. he said Sir, I'm not talking about my personal experience. I have no personal experience at all. Mm. Yes. Then I said, I, he said, I listen to you. He translated truth as a personal experience. You follow? Yes, I follow. Sir. And all the religious mm-hmm. yes, groups they speak have, they like that. Like that. Anything which is an experience is a very limited affair. Uh, you follow? Because it comes from the s- of course, of oneself. Course. The ant experience is a certain thing and the uh, elephant uh, experience is another thing. So Therefore well, the experience is the ant and it is the elephant. Of Therefore course, it's of course, useless. Of course. So 
when I said there's, we're not talking of any personal experience, he was rather surprised. You could, you follow? Yes. Therefore, this, what we are talking about, is not a personal thing at all. Yes, I think this that is, is very clear. important it's to very understand important. that. Yes, this is what you mean by saying the observer is the observed. observed quite. If what you're talking about is observed by a person, <laughs> then it is the person observing it. Then it's all too childish. Therefore, no if anything is real at all, it must be beyond experience. Yes, so this is what you're right. saying. So? That's right. This is. So what have I now? When I have discarded this thing, the vulgar stream, all the banks, the beauty on the banks, the saints and the... And the pleasures and, and the uh, expectations and the hopes. The whole business of it. The mind has a quality which it has never had before. And a depth which is really quite unfathomable. Because as soon as one tries to uh, fathom it, it's the uh, old uh, game again. Measure. It's the self. It's the self acting from a centre, centre. That's right. which That's is right. determined beforehand. So, realising that, what relationship has that, mm, mm. that mind, mm. to this tree? Very interesting. Would you please explain? You follow, sir? Answer? Yes. Say X has got that mind. Mm. Mm. What? And the stream is going on. The stream is there. The and, workman is at the door. And the, the stream baker. says, by Joe, here is a man who seems to have something. He has a different look in the eye. In the eye. Yes. And he wants to capture it and put it in the stream. The other man does. The man of the stream. Yes. Now, this is a very interesting and important point. The religious man has always said, get out of the stream and go and sit in the hills. The Many of the young people today, hearing this and hearing about this, this inaction that you speak about, remaining in the stream are incapable of dealing with life. Of course, of Therefore, course. they live on others. Therefore, there is no order, even in their temporal affairs. They drop out of school. They say nothing really matters, so I take drugs or don't take dr drugs. Since there is no morality to which I subscribe, I can sleep with everybody in town or not at all. So one sees that at this point, even if one has verbally understood what you have said, there are two dangers. There is the danger of the, the, the Swami, who... <laughs> retreats into realms of fancy in the cave, either a very fancy ashram or a cave. And there is also the danger of what we may call, to speak quickly, the hippie, who retreats into a wild disorder in which he says there are no values, therefore everything goes. So now your question is, sir, having got to this point where I see that the immutable lies beyond the stream, how will I live? In how the world no. where things go no. on, and well, therefore, no, I'll put it on mm. the other way. What is the relationship between that mind, that quality, and the this world, street, the world of, yes. the world Can of the two and be brought together? Or can that mind, can that quality of mind, enter the stream mm, and change the current of the stream, change the colour of the water? Change the colour of the of the people in it. Very important. This has been an eternal question. Mm. It's not. That's right. not one feels. For, one hears, for instance, a certain ashram in India, where the great guru says, "I am not content to enter realms where the rishis have entered before, but I bring those realms down into the world yes, of men sir, and events." Yes, sir. So. Now, the question arises, how will one live? Not how one will live. How will that act within this? How will the or, immutable act within uh, the stream? What is the relationship between the stream and the sky? And that, and the sky. Yes. This is very important, huh?
Can I? Can one? Not I. Can one live, living in the stream, reach that? Obviously not. Now, what do you mean, living in the stream? Mm, caught in this, caught in the stream, caught in the stream of vulgarity. We'll keep to that phrase because yes. it conveys. One everything. cannot reach that whilst one is motivated by the the pressures which Maybe, motivate sir, the vulgarity. While man. one is living in the stream, can one reach that? Obviously not. But if you say this, sir, one must be un one must be careful to understand what you mean, living in the stream. One must reach that living in the city going to the office, having a wife, having children, children, paying the rent. When you say one cannot live in the stream and reach that, some people may think you mean one cannot live in the world and reach oh, No, that. no, I don't mean that. So we must be sure oh, to understand course, you, of course. sir. Sir, look, I uh, we've said... The stream is in fact made of the self. Its yes. demands, its the stream appetites, has its, source. its habits. The stream has its source in the self, the in center. the me, yes. in the ego. That's right. This me also lives in the physical world, but it lives in a particular way in the physical, physical world. world. Then this other man comes along who says, with the cessation of this me, there is the sky. Now the question is, if one is not motivated by this me, which makes the vulgar world, how will one continue to live in the physical world of people and events paying the rent and so on, whilst living in the sky? Yes, sir. This is the question, sir. I wonder... Listen to this. Let's get the question clear first. Mm -hmm. We said, what is the relationship between that, hmm? the sky, we'll yes, call that yes, for the moment, yes. and the vulgar stream. That may be a wrong question altogether. Yes. Uh, what we are saying is, the stream is the me, is the ego, has its source in the self. Yes. Now wait a minute. When you reject the me, the source the of, the, the, of the river, the center of the self, centered from yes. which the river flows. That's right. Is motivated. Is when you deny that, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you go off into the mountains. It or, doesn't. Or become chaotic. Chaotic. On, the, on the contrary, yes. that brings an extraordinary sense of order. Please explain, sir. This, I think, is important. Uh, no, I want, we'll come back. All right. Look, sir, we said now that the source of the stream is the self. Yes. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. The stream is the self. That, the of course, vulgarity is, is, is the, the self. source. It, from, yes. it, from that... You said the, one something very beautiful in Rome. You said... The self is a bourgeois, yeah. and bourgeoisie is me. Me, yes, quite. Mm. That, now when that, when you, when the mind denies that, mm. mind being not uh, the superficial mind, the whole. When actual conduct and mm. behavior denies that. Denies that. When that is absent from living. Yeah. Then you live in the world. Without the me, which means you may have a wife, a child, and a house, go to a pay job, the bills. pay the bills, and all the rest of it. Go on holiday. Yes, yes, go do all the rest of it. But because there is no self, there is absolute order in what you're doing. It is the self that creates the disorder of the stream. Now that way it's interesting to see if the self uh, the, the self which has created the stream the self is the disorder the self which is divisive the self which invents the 
the saints, the the saviors, the gurus, the for, palliatives to sorrow. sorrow, all the rest of it. When that is not, then it's no longer bourgeois. Then it's no longer disorderly. Hmm? Hmm. Now, what is the relationship between that that human being who has not the self, who is living in order in this world, who has no conflicts and all that, living in this world, with wife, family, children, ba- paying bills, holidays, going for walks and all the rest of it. At this stage, many young people are paralysed. They say, if I have no self, what's going to send me to the office? If I have no self, why am I going to look after my children? Wait, 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 I'll show you why. If you have no self, what responsibility has a quite a different meaning. If you have the self, the responsibility is it's selfish. It's not only self, it becomes duty. It's compulsive. Compulsive. It is conditioned. Yeah. Then it becomes contradiction. And all the rest of it. If there is divisive. Mm. My interest mm. against yours. Now if there is no self, there is no me. Responsibility is, is a natural, it's like breathing. It's the breathing uh, of love, of, yeah, of that's affection. Right. Yes. If there is no me, there is love. That's right. Which is much better than the responsibility of duty. Uh, that's all. Yes. Then I, I will care for the next person's garden as much as, as this garden. And mean it. And I really mean it then. Then the, how I build a house, um, Everything becomes utterly responsible. So that then this world is no longer the stream. The same world of people with the same people in it and the same events in it has utterly changed. Uh, utterly, because uh, the self is not. That's right. And therefore the mind has completely undergone a change. Yes. Now, wait, sir, this is, at one point this is ra- all right. This is right and true. But also, to go much deeper into this, what is the state of the mind that has really no self? Follow we said it, it is it has immense it has sense of immense responsibility. Mm-hmm. Mm. Not, uh, Not responsibility, responsibility of fear or respectability and, uh, or duty. No responsibility to my country, to my God, to my neighbour. All that is silly. That is all protective and divisive. The responsibility of being a human. That's right. Which is no longer established in the me. Mm -hmm. Mm? Therefore, I'm very careful what's happening in India, in China, before I'm concerned. Or are you perhaps not at all concerned what's happening in India and China because you know that wherever it is, it's always happening in the individual heart. It is in the stream. Yes. And the only solution lies in... The, no, I'm not concerned with solution. I'm trying to investigate what is the quality of the mind that is no, has no self. We said it is. it feels total responsibility. Not the responsibility of mine and yours, but total for the world, for a human being. That's right. That's what I, you follow, yes, sir? Not legalistic. No, no, that's all. Truly moral. Mm. Therefore, because I feel responsible for the whole of hum- humanity, therefore there is morality on this vast scale. Morality more than anybody no, ever no, dreamt, no. yes. So, I found this. Hmm? Yes. There's deep order. Yes. Deep sense of morality. Because there's no demand. No. There's no yes. demand, of course. And then my action is from moment to moment, from moment to moment, without the remembrance, 
without imagination, without um, contriving. Yes. So if I may please interrupt you just here. When some people hear my action is from moment to moment, this also can be a very dangerous Of juncture. course, everything. Because so many of these people who live on the streets, psychologically or otherwise, who live with irresponsibility, <laughs> will tell you, I'm living from and moment so, to moment. Why I, should I shave? Why should I no, wash? No, but I'm living from moment to moment. No, I said no. I don't plan the future. Only God will tell me what to do. Oh, Therefore, I, I lie around. That's all too. So that's all too childish. I mean, would we don't please have, explain but this. Sir, when you say I live from moment to moment, which means I began. How can this tie? I began, sir. With making plans in the future to pay I, the rent, to keep my job, and to plant the right flowers in the garden. I show you, sir. When I feel, when there is no self. There is a responsibility for humanity. Mm -hmm. A small, you know. Of course. That responsibility is based on a love. Mm -hmm. And because of that, there is order, there is humility, mm -hmm. there is. Action Beauty. from moment to moment. Action from moment to moment implies not remembering a mechanical action and repetitive action. True action. Mm. Action from moment. That is, action is from moment to moment. Yes. I see Life that is action from moment to moment. I see that tr that bush is dying. I I act and I water it, I manure it, or do trim it, or whatever it is, and le give it a chance to live. And I see a mother beating the child, and there is an action from moment to moment, yes. but all based on this freedom freedom from non from the from self. The self. Yes. Therefore it is true, it has a, a continuity which is not based on memory, ta memory time, uh, contriving, imagining, and all the rest of it. And this action from moment to moment, sir, will also see next week what will be needed next of week. Of course. The food, the rent. Mm. One will also learn a language so that is tremendous all care, sir, that is, remember one's verbs. That this is, thing can contain memory, but not live in memory. Sir, that is order. Yes. That's what I said. The moment there is freedom from the self, the self being the source of disorder and vulgarity in the stream, when there is a freedom from that, then there is tremendous sense of human responsibility for the whole of humanity, not my child and my wife. And therefore from that everything flows, love. Therefore love is from action, moment to moment. It is the lack of love that creates, that gives a continuity to action as repetitive. Because when love fails, mm. spurious things come in, uh, duty or compulsion so, or so law. You see, sir, that's what uh, I'm try we are trying to say, that a mind that is free from the self, that has no longer, is not giving birth to the waters of the self. Mm. Then there is this extraordinary quality of humanity. And that is integrity. And that is compassion, you follow? Yes. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is that mind? What is its relationship to the something which is not in time, which is not uh, which is completely silent? Mm? Which is unknown. Unknown. That mind is the unknown. That's what I want to find out. Because the known is of the self. There it's uh, that's why one has to be very clear in this. And anything one says about the mind is from the known. Therefore we are saying it's a wrong question to ask what is the relationship between the stream the self, which is perpetuating the stream, and the unknown. 
because it is a... answered that question yeah. so beautifully. Yeah. The relationship is non-relationship. Yes, yeah, that's right. You don't know the relationship. That's right. As soon as you know it, the me knowing it is okay, the source yeah, yeah. of all mischief. Because the me knowing it wants to direct. This is very beautiful. You know, sir, there is in the Tibetan as well as in the Indian tradition, if I understand rightly, that there is a Maitreya, in the Tibetan tradition especially, who refuses to become the Buddha. As long as the world is in misery, and therefore he is considered as the as the incarnation of compassion. That refusal to become the Buddha is the Buddha. It's a, no, no. Yes, it because just, to be, to will no, becoming the Buddha. It, is the, no, I'm just so, yes, showing. You see, there is this idea. There is this yes, myth yes, or yes. Uh, fact or yes. what you like to call it, what they would like to call yes, it. This, hmm? Yes. And the whole hierarchical outlook is based on that. Yes. There are seven rays mm. of human beings, rays in the sense temperaments. Modalities, yes. Mo modality, and each temperament, each tendency, each modality has its own master. The man who is tremendous of his Perfect. nature, will, is the, has its master. Well, yes. The man who has got love. devotion, love, kindliness has its master, and so on, so on, so on. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. And over them all is another master, and Mahachohan, and, and over them is the compassionate one, that That's is right. the Maitreya. That's right. You see, that is a very symmetrical, systematic, um, Conceptual. concrete. Mathematical. Nah, it's too materialistic, scheme. too too vulgar. Mm, nah, it is crude. It, crude. That's the word. It's too crude altogether. But you see, this has persisted right through in the in the religious tradition. Mm. Mm. Right through mm. from Egypt, from yes, huh? Yes. Ancient Hindus and all it has. This has been the tradition yes. that you must, if you are to leave the stream, yes. you must leave it by a particular way, which is dictated by your temperament, temperament. and your destiny. Yeah. And you must leave it gradually, evolve. Yes, this brings us to a very yeah, important question. Yeah. Evolve. And when you deny this dream, yes. which is not an act of evolution, that's right. It's instantaneous. No, which is not an act of revolution, which is very important. Which is not an act of evolution. I mean, it I is pardon. an act of revolution. It is an, yeah. yes. it's an act of revolution, it's not of use. evolution. Yes. When you deny the stream. When you deny the stream. No evolution. Uh, when you deny evolution, then you yes. follow. Yes. Is there then a state of mind which has no further evolution? You follow. I would like us to examine this uh, rather systematically and clearly, sir. Yeah, we'll, do we'll do it. We'll do it now. You, would you wait? Wait. Change state. It's rather good, this, you know. As we were saying, sir, there's this whole tradition of 
hierarchical evolution with the masters guiding each kind ray, of, kind each of kind, uh, kind of uh, layers of consciousness. Mm. Uh, Ultimately, Maitreya, who is, suppose, who is the embodiment of compassion, mm. and as we were saying, it is a process of the stream, becoming the vulgar the stream, becoming the sky. The sky gradually, slowly. Mm. Yes. Every culture in the world has, publicly and secretly, its societies and its castes and its men who are concerned with turning the stream into the sky. sky. This yeah. is either done very vulgarly, as in public religion, or it is done with enormous subtlety, as in certain secret societies which are as old as history. And the question perhaps that you are asking, sir, is whether from the stream with working and thinking and willing and discipline, whether one can reach the sky. And you said that in Hindu thought there were seven streams of temperament, each one uh, guided and guarded by a particular kind of master said to belong to the White Brotherhood. That's right. And that according to one's temperament, one would be led in an evolutionary process along a spiral, as it were, to the ultimate good. And also, sir, the, this evolutionary theory is part of the communist concept too. Oh, yes. Thesis, antithesis and synthesis. The communists also believe in evolution. Yeah, of course. And from anti th thesis, antithesis and synthesis, again the synthesis has its... Becomes a new thesis. And so on yes. and on and on and on. This has been very, this is a deep-rooted tradition. Yes. And it is, and it, there is tremendous comfort in this. There's security, there's comfort. Yeah, tremendous psychological comfort. That, all right, today I'm not good, but tomorrow I'll be better. Mm. Day after tomorrow, still and better. And my destiny is in the hands of those who know more than Not I only do. that, but this idea of evolution slowly growing, Till, till I become the master. I've, I've seen some of the leaders of these movements <laughs> who say, I'm going to be a master one day, therefore I'm collecting disciples now for the future. Mm, what conceit. Uh, it's, and I some of them also say, I'm going to be the son. They say, they'll what say they any mean? kind of... What I, do they mean? I said, I used to tell them, you have, you have bagged all the good places, leave some for the others. <laughs> So you see this, so that is the basic reason of its existence, that um, it gives human beings tremendous solace. Perhaps comfort. there's more, sir. Perhaps, perhaps there's more, sir. Perhaps some people really have had some contact with the sky and have tried to bring other people into the sky and perhaps they've uh, hey, wrongly hey, devised a hey, system. Hey, not understanding but that there is basic no reason for all this is human demand for comfort. Is all, sir? I wonder, sir. I think some people find themselves in this kind of society because they sincerely do want to get out of the stream. And, and no, they no, do sincerely no. understand the limitations of this. I, I say, I'm not talking of that. I'm saying this idea of evolution gradualness, mm. grow, growing, becoming better and better and mm -hmm. better and better, gives me, mm. or gives one, mm. a great sense of hope. Yes, one sees these people who, uh, who uh, flash it around like a badge. My I mean, society it, 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 this my is the human, so I, I can't s stop my sorrow, and perhaps next year. It's a way of capitulating. Yeah, next year. That it gives me hope, comfort, solace, a sense of continuity. It also totally uh, makes me escape from the real issue. So, this idea of 
evolutionary becoming, which tradition has established, slow growth till you reach master and then go on to become a future Maitreya, then future Buddha, yes. then so on, so on. Yes, it's a tremendously flattering, comforting idea. Now, sir, are you saying that there is no process Wait. to understanding? The understanding you talk of is the understanding of the sky. Is yeah, to I'm live in the sky instead of living in the stream. Now, are I'm you saying, sir, that that is not a process? I'm showing the you. The time so is not involved. I'm coming to that, sir. I'm showing you something. Little patience. That is. That is our tradition. Understood. That is our belief. Belief. That's our hope. That's our comfort. That's our. It gives me a sense of being that I shall be, which is the continuity and the refinement of the Self. Oh, undoubtedly. So, the refinement of the vulgar. Yes. The Greek mytholo mythology, the Roman, you follow? It has gone oh, yes. throughout history. Yes, there is a book, a very popular book, which describes graphically, almost like James Bond, the quest for a master. This man goes through the Middle East and meets uh, many Sufi masters. In fact, as somebody pointed out to me, the motive emerging from all this is greed. Of course. So, ambition. Now, what we have to see this. There is this tradition embedded deep down, <coughs> and the mind demanding comfort, solace, and all the rest of it, holds that tradition. Mm -hmm. and worships the Masters, mm -hmm. the Gurus, the um, Devs Enlightened, those the who are going to be saviours, and you know the whole gamut of it. We are saying that the continuity and the refinement of the Self is still the Self. Is still the same. Is still the self. Therefore, however much you go, the more you go, in fact, the more refined it is. The but it's still is the, the self. self, because will and striving, of course, of course, and thinking are involved. Yeah, so that's becoming. Therefore, when you deny the self, mm -hmm. you are denying evolution. Therefore, you deny even your own salvation. Of course, you, therefore, you are no longer seeking the hierarchical process of becoming. The spiral of progress. Pro huh? no. So the next question is: How am, how is a man who is in the stream to have this understanding instant? Yes. Well, no, without going through the evolutionary process. Now, are you saying that the evolutionary process leads nowhere? Obviously. No. Good. The evolutionary process is the evolution of the Self. Yes, this has been quite clear. Yeah. I would like, however, sir, if I may make a small diversion here, to ask you what happened between the time when you spoke Theosophy and the time when you speak as you speak now. Oh, I think that's Time was involved, historical time. There was a time when you did not have the understanding you have now, because you spoke differently. Yes, I think that's Something fair. happened, and you now understand what you didn't understand then. What was the element of this change? I think that's fairly simple enough. If I may say this in a personal way, sir, I'm sorry to have asked you directly. Oh, it's all right, sir. I'll, I'm, Here that one has to go into this much more deeply than this qu to answer this question. Mm. One must have one must go into the whole question of this K and his brother as boys, why he wasn't conditioned, mm. why superficially he repeated these things, mm. whether there was any time this is any time that the real thing wasn't there. Mm -hmm. 
you follow? But only like a throwing off. If you say that the real thing was always there, I know, I know the danger of it. Then everybody is going to say, well, he is of a different species, therefore his teaching has no value in the modern world because it is addressed to people different from himself and it can't help them. I know this. Uh, that's why I said to answer I'm that. I'm sure this is not what you mean. No, no. To answer that question, one has to go much further than the question implies. Perhaps you could explain it, since it is just a, an interlude, perhaps you could explain what happened between the time when you didn't speak as you do and now. So look. You spoke about the Fountain of Wisdom, you spoke about yes. the Masters, yeah. you spoke about becoming and so now, on. Now if you look at it, you were young. There were these two boys. The older boy was chosen as the vehicle hmm. of that teacher. The of teacher, the sky. The sky. The world teacher who took the body of Jesus and all that. I'm not saying I believe or disbelieve, I'm just pointing out. He was born in that family of orthodoxy, Brahman orthodoxy, something tremendous at that time, at that age. Still today. <laughs> it's vanishing today slowly. And he was not conditioned by that. Then he was, he was found, made head of various, org various organizations, and theosophy, he was living with those who believe in the Masters, um, hierarchy. reincarnation, hierarchy, and, and the idea of becoming slowly evolving. And being in that, he repeated it. He was not, he hadn't broken, he hadn't opened yet. Yes, yes. He was just repeating. He hadn't opened yet. Now, what happened when Wait, he opened? Wait, I'm just. I'm, I'm, he was repeating. Yes. He re he was. Um, um, he became a priest at one time. Mm -hmm. He did puja. Puja at one time yes. and broke that. Yes. He belonged to um, various things in the Theosophical Society. Went away from that. And so yes. he was just moving. Yes. There was no deep penetration of these influences. Yes. Hmm? He was yes. vacant and therefore they had a certain sway over him for a time. For a time being. When did this change take place? Hmm? Was it the result of evolution? You follow? Mm -hmm. That is, innumerable lives and in coming to that, mm -hmm. which some believe, mm -hmm. Others believe that he is a vehicle of the, mm -hmm. of the sky, of the sky, of the Lord Maitreya, and so it was all in the state of belief, mm, mm -hmm. tradition, acceptance of a future avatar. Mm -hmm. It was all in that level. Yes. Are you asking the question, how did this happen? I think you've already answered it. <laughs> yes, sir. How did this You are saying that the stream was superficially flowing, was superficially imposed on this consciousness, and therefore it seemed to act for a time, but that when maturity came, it, it was shed quite naturally, and in fact there hadn't been any deep influence at all. That's right. You, thank you, sir. You have answered that question. That's good. Now we may proceed to what you were going to say. You were, going, you were asking, how does, if it is not an evolutionary process, how does consciousness become of the sky? Yeah, that's right. Since we see that the self can only produce the self, no matter how refined, you are saying 
with the repudiation of evolutionary spirals, how, if that's not the way, what is the way? Very good. Sir, when you... It's a strange fact, I must tell you this. When they found that boy, the first thing they said, what impressed them most, was they saw in the aura of the boy mm. no element of selfishness. Mm. They were very surprised by that. That has been um, written about. And, yes. um, I would like to find out how did this happen? How did what happen? For them to see? No, no, or no, no, for no, the boy to be so. To be so. Yes. You follow the point? Of what they saw, that's it. Mm. If no, I see. That's another question, but it's only very superficial. Very superficial. How, how did, did the boy like appear see. without the self? Or the traces of self? One might say, as you said yesterday, sir. <laughs> Is it relevant how? The fact is, it was so. No. It is important to find out because was it the result of evolution? No, he was a tiny child. How? The ego? Oh, I see. Ah. Reincarnated. <laughs> mm, that just it. I think you've dealt with that when you said that when you said that evolution doesn't bring you to the to this other but how thing. did it happen to that boy? Was he a freak? Was please. he like in a garden, a sport? Please, please tell us. Uh, that, that. So, is understanding a matter of time or does it happen without? Any volition, mm -hmm. when the mind is not caught in time, mm -hmm. which is evolution. When by understanding you mean the cessation of the self. Yes, by understanding, Unders seeing the sky. Let's put it that yes, way. The, the cessation of the stream. Of the self, stream of the self. Yeah. Now you're saying, does the does stepping out of the stream of the self, which you call understanding, does that come about through time, or is there some other factor? This boy Obvious. was Obvi already out of the stream of the self, you were saying. Obviously, it is not true time. Because we've dealt with that. That, I think, is, is um, a wish, a feeling that it gives you comfort because you are, you are procrastinating, you are lazy mentally, say, well, next life. Look at all the millions of people who exactly. believe in reincarnation. It's a folly. Folly. Yes. Not that you're saying it is or it isn't. No. But it is not the way to the sky. Absolutely not. Oh, I have the, never. I can You're never. not saying there is or there isn't reincarnation. No, no, no that, we that, dealt with that the other day. You're saying whether there is or not, it's not the way to the sky. No. Yes. So, if that is not the way... Out of the stream. Out of the stream, which is time evolution. Hmm? Because that's only refinement yes. of the self. Yes. What was the element which made this boy different? That. And how is it that you step out of time without effort, without time? Right? Yes, sir. That's the question. I think you do step out of it if you deny time. Deny in the sense not physical time, but the sense of becoming, of being, of achieving, of um, comparing. You follow? All yes, that. Yes. If you shed all that... If you shed becoming. Becoming. You are out of the stream. Yes. That shedding is not a matter of volition. Volition is time. V voli yes. Volition is that. Uh, of course, becoming. Becoming. So, you, if you understand this very clearly, see this very clearly, mm. time does is refinement of, of the Self, not the freedom from the Self. 
the big the will will to achieve is still part of it. It is the self. Self. Uh, the better uh, polishing, polishing, polishing is yes. still the same. Yes. When you see that very, very, very clearly, intellectually even, mm -hmm. mm. and therefore cease to act in terms of time. Cease to be time. Yeah, cease to be time. You are out of it. Mm. That's right. Because the out of it is like I was watching the other day a penguin jumping out of the water <laughs> into a high plateau, yes. high bank. It was one movement. Yes. You follow? Yes, yes. And it is exactly like that. Yes. This is the negative action. The trouble, I think, here, sir, is that most people expect that negative action to have a particular feeling or a particular click about it. And so, with the positive action, they seek some recognition of the negative action. Uh, In other words, they want to know that they are out of time. <laughs> seeing that that very wish is the essence of no, life. No, sir, the, neg the negation is the positive. Yes. Huh? The negative is the positive. The positive. <laughs> Not <coughs> seeking through negation the positive. This is very important. People <coughs> always look, <coughs> they make the pursuit of the negative In the, the very essence <coughs> of becoming and effort. <coughs> and this is perhaps the great trap of every single religious discipline. I will become good. I will become mm. the Mahatma. Mm. I will That's improve right. myself. That when you deny that, neg negate all that, mm. not verbally, but yes. negate it mm. through your heart, yes. it completely, mm. then you, there is the positive of that penguin jumping out of the water. Yes. Is there any particular feeling in that? No. You're out. There's no particular <laughs> feeling or enlightenment or state of ecstasy. You're out. When you are out, there is complete, there is different ecstasy. You follow? Not we the ecstasy of coming out, which, would, which, which gives them comfort. With dissatisfaction and experience. Yes. Which, and therefore yes. belongs to the stream. Would you mind saying something, sir, about the ecstasy of non-experience? Because again, so many people have projected this as a state of vacuous oblivion. I know. Sir, the whole idea... I saw a girl sitting on the campus of Berkeley in a state yeah. of... Uh, <laughs> goodness knows. What was the word you used yesterday? Discombobulation. Oh, I don't know. What <laughs> you see, sir, there is the whole idea, again, tradition, As tradi uh, traditionally, enlightenment is an achievement. Yes. Enlightenment comes as a reward. As a reward, of or as an experience, yes. or as a, when you are in a certain state. Yes. The Buddha is supposed yes. to have achieved enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. After eight years of trying. Uh, under the Bodhi but tree. But then they say he stopped trying. Perhaps that is so. It was you the stopping follow? trying which was the enlightenment. Of course. And On the other hand, it is true, sir, that you can get nothing for nothing. Uh, no. And you must, you must earn. No, sir. Look, Not sir. Effort. No, do, do look. No, yes. no, no. If you see, the self is the source of mischief, mischief, confusion, sorrow, the vulgar Limitation. stream. Hmm? If you see it as the observer and the observed, yes. it is the observer. Yes. It, it is the cage. The observer bondage. is the observed in that case. If that observation takes place, you leave the stream. Mm. Then there is the st there is the movement, which is the leaving of the stream. Mm? Now, for us, experience. Bring certain ecstasy, hmm. like the cat being stroked. Stroked, like uh, experience brings certain happiness, certain ecstasy, certain sense of well-being, certain sense of achievement, um, acquiring knowledge, all that. There is the contentment of a self, uh, which is all part of the self. Yes. So experiencing is 
the experiencing of the self at a different level. Yes. Experiencing is always of the self. Of self. So, when you negate the self, mm -hmm. you are negating experience. Yes. That's how this is really... This is very important. Uh, when you are... It, you are negating experience. You don't... You are not seeking. Any experience. Any experience. No. You are negating all experience. Ah, that's so. It isn't that there is some other ethereal experience, oh. somehow different from the others. That requires tremendous mm. perception. It isn't this is what you mean by dying, sir. Mm. Is it, is, of course. This, this is... Now, would you, you mind be... saying, sir, would you mind telling us again, what is this ecstasy which is not experience? Therefore, let us... It's freedom. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let us de see clearly the experience that gives ecstasy, the experience that gives pleasure, the experience that gives you knowledge, the experience that makes you feel... Achievement. Achieving and all the rest of it is part of the self, is the movement of the it self. It is the self. Is the movement of the self. When you negate the self, you negate the total demand for experience. Hmm. Which means negate total demand of ecstasy, hmm. of pleasure, of comfort, of achievement. Hmm. Therefore, when you negate something irreal, mm. the real is there. Mm. Then our in that, is, which is not an experience, because mm. there is nothing Because to, it doesn't depend on one's reaction to it. And not only that, because there is no... It's not created by, by one. the me. It's there yeah. w whether or not uh, I do something about it. So, no, it's much more subtle than that. Do watch it. That is when the self which is seeking experience is negated. Mm. That very negation is the positive action of a mind that says, no, I don't want any experience. Mm. There is no experience. Yes. Therefore, such a mind is a light to itself. Mm. Now, what do you mean by that? Sir? You see, it, see it, what has happened. There is no guide. It's a, oh, it, yes, it is not dependent. It is like a light, the yes. sun. Yes. And that has its own ecstasy, its own movement of joy. It's nothing to it do with this. It's true. So, evolutionary theory of becoming, mm. achieving, has nothing to do with the reality of the negation of the self. I mean, this is really, I am sure the ancients must have said this. Of Doesn't course they did. Sir. Of course they did. That's the tragedy is that what they said was turned into a system which became the biggest cage of the self. Oh, it's muck. Yes. Well, the Vedanta muck or the mm. Christian mm. muck, or it doesn't matter. It is, it mm. is dirty. Mm. It's dirty to get imprisoned in, in the pursuit of that which is not the result no. of pursuit. So, sir, can the mind, without any motive, negate the self? Die, in fact. And it can only negate the self when it sees the self uh, not as observer, but as the observed, and it is, mm. it is seen, mm. not from outside, from within. When it understands the total mm. I think that's enough. Don't you? That's enough. We have been yes. at it for an hour and a half. Yes.